Hi, welcome back to the channel. It's been a little while since I've recorded one of these, but I do have another uh, video of um, making artwork that I'm going to put together, and this is the front end of that. Uh, in the meantime, what I'm doing is putting one of the short overviews together for the painting named Rose. It's one of the foundation pieces for the uh, Zodiac series again, and uh, what I will um, what I'll do is, is I can put that out on the Instagram feed. This one will go out onto Instagram TV because it's longer. Um, it was fun to do as well. It was the 12th of the 12. Um, no, I fit. It was the 11th of the 12 uh, foundation pieces for the Zodiac series. There was the last um, light amethyst one that came after that. As you can see in, in the uh, video, there are two of these small five by five canvases side by side. And uh, I, did, I did the rose one before I did the amethyst one, that's right. I think you can also see behind it is the, uh, one of the stages of uh, revolving singularity. And for those of you that are interested, I did a fairly long blog post on all of the ins and outs of doing revolving singularity. Um, I will try to link uh, below so that you can find that out there. It's, uh, it was a, f a longer blog than I normally would put together because there were so many lessons that I learned in that painting that I will talk about um, in, in the, the video that I put together specifically for that one, but it was a real uh, project for me. Anyway, this one is uh, fairly short. Uh, it, it, it's a uh, Dutch pour, and it happened fairly fast. No real dramas with, um, with Zodiac Rose. Uh, it, it had to achieve a more pinkish look. There were, there's three red-based paintings in the Zodiac series. The first one was Ruby, and that's a real deep uh, red and magenta. The um, second one that I showed in, a, in another video was Garnet, and that's um, a very intense red, almost uh, brownish in those, in those tones. And then this one is much more pink and more subtle uh, for the rose gemstone. Uh, enjoy it. I will come back at the end and walk you through some of the ways that it presents itself and what it can be used for and I hope you uh, will hang around until the later part so that we can talk about some of that and new, new things coming up. palette for Rose Zodiac is, is pretty simple. There's only six colors at work here. Rose, obviously. Um, <clears throat> Rose Matter. And then the deepest color in there is this uh, Quinacridone Red. Uh, then there are three Artist Loft Iridescence that out of professional series uh, in, in white. Uh, iridescent White, Iridescent Pearl, and then bright silver. And those contrasts were enough to um, get the effect that I was looking for. What you can see here is me adding the colors uh, one after the other in an alternating red to white pattern so that when they do get dispersed with the uh, the blower 
they will create the contrast that I'm hoping to achieve. Here's the finished result. Uh, Semi-dry, Rose Zodiac, and then on the display, easel, fully dried. The detail of it, the two Zodiac templates, one for Libra, one for Scorpio, and then a couple of room mock-ups, one showing it as a as bookshelf art and the other as a uh, enlargement uh, framed. Thanks for watching to this point. Uh, I, I see you've gone down toward the end of this thing. And let's talk a little bit about what uh, will happen now that I have this foundation uh, Dutch pour completed. As you saw, there are a couple of templates for uh, Zodiac based reproductions. Most of those would be prints. That's typically what people like to do, but there are other products and the print on demand things that can, can happen. What I'm planning to do with uh, this aspect of my work is I'm going to divide my website uh, between the WM Creative Art, the fine art side of things, which would include the Dutch pours and things like that, and create another site uh, for the more merchandise oriented things because it occurs to me that these Zodiac templates with the, the symbols and the, the, uh, the image and the traits and the constellation and those things, people will like those for cell phone covers or for tote bags and things like that. I, I'm not that comfortable mingling that together with the fine art because I, I think it just sort of confuses people who come to my site and ask themselves, what, what's this guy on about? And so I will invest some more time in, in setting up a, another website for promoting that sort of stuff but one thing I did want to talk about in that uh, one of the products that I would like to offer isn't on isn't print on demand it's more custom than that I do encaustic photography for those of you that have visited my website where a photograph of whatever is is used as the seed image to build out an encaustic painting it can occupy just one corner of the substrate or it can occupy the entire substrate. My piece for the uh, violet lily is on a 12 by 12 substrate that's um, it, the entire image is, uh, is, is pasted down on that and then the wax goes in over that to obscure areas and add uh, features to areas and things. I think I want to create a zodiac based uh, in caustic photography and do a video of it so that it's not so mysterious because I get a lot of questions from folks asking what Bill what is in caustic photography I learned it from a lady up in Toronto um, who uh, Joya Paul is her name and uh, I, I didn't realize I mean I bought her work when I was visiting in Toronto a few years ago and I was back up in Toronto up, last year at this time in fact and I, I had a conversation with her and I said, so what's the secret behind this? And she was kind enough to share the encaustic photography techniques and then how she applies the uh, colored waxes on top of it. So I think I'd like to do that because I think as a custom piece of bookshelf art, I can create the five by five or maybe a little bit bigger on a, uh, the wooden substrate for the encaustic photography, apply the, uh, the template down on top of it and then proceed with the encaustic work on top of that. And so it would be 
a really an original piece of art which is using a, a reproduction of an original piece of art with the, um, the actual original encaustic work on top of it signed and, and uh, serialized and all the things that go along with the original artwork. So keep your eye as, as, eyes out for that. I will be making that video here pretty shortly uh, now that the weather is cooling off a little and it's not so sweltering be make, making hot wax and things like that. Anyway, once again, I really do appreciate all you folks tuning in and, and watching this and, and um, some of the comments that I get or, or letters asking about my techniques and my plans for, for doing work in the future. I'll try to, I try to answer everybody uh, because it's important to me to keep this relationship with you going and, um, and sharing good ideas and things like that. Once again, thanks for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I genuinely do. And I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.